Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the latest update to the working title, G1000 NXI. It's now in version 0.10.1. 0.10.0 came out, and then a hotfix version came out, 0.10.1. But what we're going over here are the main features added in 0.10.0, and the release notes for that are linked in the description below. Make sure you update the NXI by going to your content manager within Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you don't have it, you can pick it up for free on the marketplace for both Xbox and PC. The first thing you'll notice if you're starting cold and dark is the new boot up sequence and what's called reversionary mode. This is basically a one screen version of the NXI when both screens aren't on. So you can see how the layout here is a little bit different. On the left side, we have the EIS or engine information system, which normally we only see over on the MFD. And then the inset map that I happen to have turned on is moved to the right side of the screen. And then in the middle, you can see this message AHRS Align. That stands for the Attitude and Heading Reference System. This is the system that provides information on our pitch, our roll, and our yaw. So it's telling us to keep the wings level while that system finishes initializing. Once the MFD is started up, you'll see this new welcome screen, and there's a message at the bottom that says, press enter or the rightmost soft key to continue. So pressing either one of those buttons will continue on and exit reversionary mode and bring us back to that familiar two screen layout. Next up, there's a new system setup page that's available under the aux page group. To change to the page group, you use the outer FMS knob first. So we're gonna change from the map page group over to the one in the middle called aux. And system setup is the only page there right now, so that's our default. There are a lot of different settings here. The ones that are shown in cyan or that blue color are the ones that you can edit. And you do that by pushing the FMS knob to turn on the cursor. If you're using a mouse, you do that by pointing at the knob, holding the left mouse button, and then right clicking. You can use the outer FMS knob to choose one of the fields, whichever one you want to change. So in this case, I'll go up and choose the distance and speed setting. And then all you have to do is rotate the inner knob to pop open the options and then keep rotating the inner knob to choose which setting you want. In this case, I'll change from nautical to metric and then hit enter to accept that. So now the distance is shown on our map will be shown in kilometers instead of nautical miles. I did play around with some of the other settings here like temperature and weight, and they didn't seem to have any effect. So it's possible they aren't implemented just yet. In the top right of the settings screen is the section called MFD data bar fields. And the data bar is this spot right here at the top, these four magenta pieces of data that we can now customize. By default, it shows ground speed, desired track, current track, and estimated time on route, which is to our next waypoint. But we can now pick from this long list of possibilities to customize what data is shown here. Here's a table with all the choices and what they mean so you can decide what's important to you. I decided to change field three from current track to ETA so I could see a countdown timer that shows how long until we'll get to our destination airport. The next new feature is that we can now edit the VNAV altitudes that are in our flight plan. Keep in mind that VNAV on the NXI is only used for descending. You can't climb with VNAV like you can in something like an Airbus or the CJ4. So just remember while you're editing these altitudes that they're used for descent only. You'll notice that the altitudes are now shown in either a cyan color or in a white color. When they're in a cyan color, that means that they've been designated for use with vertical guidance and with VNAV. Since I've loaded an approach here into Camarillo, it's automatically designated these three waypoints for vertical guidance. And this is what we've used before to use VNAV. But now we have the capability to designate the altitudes for vertical guidance ourselves. To edit an altitude, you first need to enable the cursor on the flight plan page. You do that by pushing the inner FMS knob and then use the outer knob to move over to one of the altitudes. So in this case, I'm selecting the 5,000 feet right here at the waypoint parole. To enter the editing mode, you turn the inner FMS knob, kind of like you would if you're editing a waypoint. Now you can see it's highlighted on the first digit, zero. Use the outer FMS knob to choose which of the numbers you want to change. And then once you've highlighted that number, use the inner knob to change it. So I'm changing the five to a seven, and then I'll press enter when I'm done, and that will save that altitude. And you can see the little pencil icon that appears to the right, letting me know that this is an altitude that I've edited. Any altitudes shown in white are for our reference only and are not used for vertical guidance. So this altitude at SADI is just informational, and because we'll be in a descent at that point, it's telling us where it expects we'll be as we cross over SADI. 
You can remove the designation by highlighting the altitude again and pressing clear. And then it'll give you a little prompt to say, remove VNAV altitude. And you just hit enter if you want to remove it. And that'll revert it back to its original value. If you've edited an altitude that is part of a procedure, like this Kudak waypoint right here, and I hit clear on that, you'll notice it gives me two options. It'll say I can either remove that altitude from vertical guidance completely, or I can choose the second option, revert, to revert back to the original altitude that is the published altitude for that waypoint. You may run into a scenario where you see an X placed over the altitude. That can happen if there's an invalid constraint and it can no longer use that altitude for vertical navigation. In this case, I had changed the altitude at Kudak from 4,200 up to 6,500 feet. And because this is only three miles between these two waypoints, it's saying I can't descend at a three degree flight path angle from 6,500 to 3,700 feet in time. So it's showing that that altitude 3,700 feet is no longer valid and can't be followed. So let's go through a little scenario here where I may want to designate a waypoint for use with VNAV. Right now I'm cruising at 7,000 feet towards my next waypoint. And you can see in magenta here, our next VNAV designated altitude is 4,200 feet. That matches down here in Cyan, which is Kudak at 4,200. So what if I want to descend using VNAV prior to that? Say ATC gives us an instruction to cross Ventura VOR at 6,000 feet instead of 7,000 feet. I can turn on my cursor and go and edit that to be 6,000 feet. As soon as I make this designation, it's now usable with VNAV. So over here, you can see in magenta, this is now updated from 4,200 to 6,000 feet as our next VNAV target altitude. I can now change my selected altitude and enable VNAV so I can follow that descent profile automatically to get down to 6,000 feet by that waypoint, just like we've done before. Or I can also use the VNAV direct button if I want to start that descent right now. It's a little unrealistic because this will give us like a 0.4 degree flight path angle in this situation, but it's still an option that we unlock by designating it for use with vertical guidance and with VNAV. If you haven't used VNAV to descend before, just check out my video linked in the corner and in the description below to learn how to do an RNAV approach. And in that video, I also use VNAV for our descent. Next up, not only can we edit the VNAV altitudes, but we can now also edit the flight path angle or FPA. The quickest way to do that is to press this VNAV profile soft key at the bottom, and that'll automatically highlight the flight path angle. And then you can just use the FMS knob to change that angle. You can see here as I change it, the top of descent is automatically changing, reflecting that new angle we'll be descending at. So if I make it a shallower flight path angle, the top of descent will be calculated to come sooner because we're not going to be descending as quickly. Lastly, the NXI will now show you a preview of any procedure that you're choosing. So if you're choosing an approach, an arrival, or a departure procedure, as you scroll through the options, the map will automatically pan and scale to show you that procedure. It'll also do the same thing when selecting a transition waypoint. So here you can see the difference between choosing SADI to the south or WOTOK up to the north. If you want to see the full release notes and bug fixes for version 0.10.1, check out the link in the video description below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Leave any questions, comments, and suggestions below. Happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next video.